In this episode, I want to talk about the rule of 12s, something we use when deciding how many people to pull when using mechanical vantage for whitewater rescue. When we're pulling a raft off a rock or pulling a kayak out, I like to follow what is called the rule of 12s. And the idea is we never pull with more than 12 when we multiply the number of people by the mechanical, mechanical advantage. So for example, if I'm using a three to one Z rig, a very common thing, I wouldn't pull with more than four people because four times three is 12. To me, a vector pull is uh, basically a three to one. I'm not gonna say why in this video and you may disagree with me, but that's fine. But I wouldn't pull with more than four people on a vector pull. A four to one pig rig is something that isn't used very often, but is taught in classes. And so I wouldn't use more than three people because three times four is 12. A five to one is a cool system if you only have a few people. Uh, to stay below 12, I would only pull with two people. And nine to one, I'd only pull with one person. So if I pull with two people on nine to one, I get to 18, which violates the rule of 12s. I've drawn up on the whiteboard here a three to one system. There's a raft over here on a rock. We're pulling on it. And there's a three to one system here. And there's somebody pulling, there's people here pulling in the rope. And there's some generalizations I want to make about pulling. The average person can generally pull about half a kilonewton or like some fraction of their weight. But somebody who's really strong, who's using good technique, can pull up to a kilonewton, maybe a tiny bit more, but a kilonewton is a lot for somebody to pull. And how much you can pull depends on a lot of factors. How thick the rope is, are you wearing gloves, how heavy are you, are you using good technique. There's just a lot that goes into how much you can pull, but let's just say the most somebody can pull is about a kilonewton. So if you have four people pulling, you could theoretically possibly be pulling with four kilonewtons. And if it goes through this system, which is theoretically three to one, that would be applying 12 kilonewtons right here, which is a lot of force. And there's different things we're using here. A lot of ropes we have are 10 to 29 kilonewtons. So if we're pulling with 10 kilonewtons, we could be breaking some ropes, which is not a good thing. Carabiners are generally 20 to 29 kilonewtons, so at 12, we're getting close to that. Prusiks are 8 to 12 kilonewtons, so the prusik is probably what's going to break in the system, because it's right here, it's getting twice the pull. So if I'm pulling a 4 kilonewtons, that prusik's seeing 8 kilonewtons, so some, kil some prusiks that could break, but also the prusiks will slip maybe at like 5 or 6 kilonewtons, right? So if you're pulling with 3 kilonewtons, you could see slippage. Now, slippage isn't bad, like nobody's going to get hurt probably, but it does trash your rope. You can see this is a prusik we tested a failure. There's a lot of friction here. When you start slipping, the prusik starts slipping, you can see the rope is stiff. We basically trashed this rope, we've melted it. And so you've destroyed your rope, which is bad for a few reasons. You've destroyed your expensive rope and that's the rope you need to use. So that's not a good thing. You don't really want prusiks to slip, but if something is gonna slip, I guess that's gonna be the thing. Webbing is pretty strong. It's usually 18 to 20 kilonewtons and it's usually doubled up. So here, when we're doing a two point anchor, it's, there's four strands of it. And so it's, you know, there's four things that are this strong. So it's actually pretty strong. If they have it around a uh, rock or something, it's um, not quite, it's not gonna be twice as strong because there's a knot, the knot takes away from it. And there's a little bit of an angle here, but it's stronger than this. So, and if we want this to be stronger, we would do like a wrap three pull two or a basket hitch or some other system that uses more strands. But webbing is really the thing that breaks. It's the D-rings that break. That's the thing we have to worry about. We don't know how strong they are. Are they new D-rings? Are they old D-rings? Are they welded? Are they sewn? Are they glued on? Um, well, are they just defective D-rings? I've had D-rings on boats, like we could figure out how to pull out with our hands because they were put in defectively. And so we just don't know how strong D-rings are. That's the thing that we don't know that's gonna break. And that's why we should always be using at least a two-point anchor on the rafts so if we're gonna attach a D-rings. Ideally three, but at least two so that if one breaks, it catches the system and everything doesn't come firing back and hurting the people. Now, so again, we're pulling potentially four kilonewtons on a three to one system, theoretically 12 kilonewtons. We're, we're not breaking these really necessarily, theoretically, but we shouldn't even be approaching those numbers. We should be less than half of these numbers, which at 12 kilonewtons we're not, right? So that's kind of pushing it. There's other factors like that's This is the brand new, optimal breaking strengths, but there's knots in the rope. Like a figure eight, for example, reduces this strength by 30%-ish, that's about, there's different people, different people say different things on not efficiency of a figure eight. Let's just go with, it's 70% efficient, which means we only get 70% of this strength once the knot's attached. Uh, ropes get dirty, they get faded, they get old, they get used. And so ropes degrade over time 
based off of a bunch of factors. This is a brand new strength. Carabiners, if you drop them, they can get micro cracks. And so brand new, they're 20 to 29 kilonewtons. But as they get older and they get used, they this goes down. Prusik, same thing, dirt. They're, if you have a knot tied in there, if you have a double fisherman's, that takes away the strength. Ideally, you have a prusik with sewn loops. Uh, webbing, again, gets older, dirty, all those things. The knots in the webbing, the, you'll generally use a water knot. That's less efficient, so it's not this strong. So at 12 kilonewtons, we're getting a little too close to comfort at, to these things. So, But it's not actually 12 kilonewtons because four people are probably realistically only going to pull like two-ish kilonewtons, maybe three. Let's just say two for the sake of argument. Most people can pull half a kilonewton. Four people are going to pull two kilonewtons. The system is not actually three to one. It's theoretically at best two and a half to one. So you're probably pulling here with five kilonewtons, which I think is a good responsible amount to be pulling. That's a, a gives us a good safety factor. We're well under these breaking strengths. And as the stuff gets older, we can still handle it. Once you start putting more people on, then you start, you put five people on, then these forces multiply. And it's hard to say like stuff could start breaking. And so you want to be really thoughtful if you're going to break the rule of 12. And so it's a rule. It's a good generalization. If you're using, if you're out there using like a throw old throw bag and just some webbing we found and some carabiners that we use to clip our water bottles into rafts, you're certainly going to want to only have four people pulling. But if you have top of the line stuff, you have brand new carabiners that are only used for safety kits, a good high quality rope in the 29 kilonewton range. And it's equipment you only use for rescue stuff. And as top level of equipment, okay, I could see breaking the rule of 12s, maybe adding a fifth person to the pole. You just need to be hyper aware that you're starting to stress the system beyond what it's willing to take and what it's able to take. And the other thing, if you are gonna break the rule of 12s, you then wanna be sure to have that third spot, that third point on your anchor. You want to have a three point suffix lensing anchor because again, we don't know what's going on with D-rings. That's the big unknown. So I'm going to, if I'm ever going to break the rule of 12s, I'm going to focus on a three point suffix lensing anchor. And to do that, you usually need a 30 foot or more length of webbing. And so this is why I think it's so important that we have 30 foot lengths of webbing in our kit so that we can do a solid three point suffix lensing anchor. So those are my thoughts on the rule of 12s. I love this idea. It's a great generalization, a great rule to follow uh, when you're out in the field so you can make good decisions about what you're doing. Most of us are using Z-Rigs. Most of us are using three to ones. It's a super effective tool. We're all practiced with it. It's the general knowledge. So that would basically mean we shouldn't have more than four people pulling at once. So those are my thoughts. If you have any questions about this, if you think the rule of 12s is dumb, you think it should be the rule of 13s, tell me in the comments. If you have, again, like better ideas, ways for me to learn, want to share a scientific paper with me that will help me maybe change my mind on something, do it. I, I love to learn. It's how I get better. I use this channel to improve my own knowledge and thought process. So please do that. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.